welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well today I picked up a set of four of these uh, Colonial Maple uh, Maple Revival style swivel bar stools and uh, I paid $20 for all four of them. They're, they're in pretty good shape and uh, they're, they're manufactured by a company called S. Bent Brothers. They were out of Gardner, Massachusetts. They've been in business, had been in business I think since the mid 1800s. They went out of business around 2000. They're known for making very high quality chairs, particularly this uh, Maple Colonial Revival style. I would guess by the age of the person who was selling these, these are probably from the 60s. They could be from the 70s, they could be from the 50s, but they're basically you know, manufactured American furniture, but high quality stuff. This one has a bit of a problem and a typical homeowner repair. So let me uh, bring you in here and we'll take a look at it. And we're looking at the spindles coming off the seat. Here's the seat here. Here's the spindle heading up towards the backrest. And you can see this. This is our multiple wrappings of scotch tape, which um, would lead one to believe that this spindle is split. Anytime you get a, a spindle that breaks like that, you have you know, two choices. You can either try to glue it back together or you can turn yourself another spindle. To turn another spindle on this chair, you would have to disassemble every single one of those spindles, take this whole assembly off, and then loosen this joint here and slide that spindle this way. And just between you, me, and the fence post, I've never turned anything in my life. As a matter of fact, I just got my first lathe a couple of weeks ago, and I haven't even had a chance to, uh, to try to start to learn it. So we're really going to hope that we can get this spindle repaired by taking the, uh, the binding of, of scotch tape apart and gluing it back together. So anytime we have scotch tape or any kind of adhesive tape like that binding, as you know, the solution is mineral spirits or naphtha to help get some of that stickiness off and break the bond. So I will bring you back and we'll start to get this unwrapped and see what's waiting for us under the scotch tape. This tape has been on here for quite some time. So far I'm able, I'm able to get this off without using any mineral spirits. The adhesive is not that strong, although the tape is getting quite brittle. Okay, it looks like it's a pretty good shatter, but it looks right now like all the pieces are still there, which is, which is good news. I'm going to have to uh, pick this chair up to get uh, working on the back. got most of this tape off and you can see we've got quite a split here and around this side and it's actually split again so and it it also looks like this is slightly out of out of skew to get this back in here and then we've also got this this is loosened up as well so I'm going to get some uh, mineral spirits and wipe down all this glue get this joint cleaned up and see if we can get it pulled back together. So I'll bring you back. I've got most of the tape removed and I'm able to get this joint fairly well lined up. This part here just needs to be clamped, clamped closed. There's a little bit of wood missing at the top right there. But I've been pondering what caused this spiral break and initially I thought maybe that the the spindle had twisted and it was held in with the glue joint until I accidentally lifted this loose arm and look what happens. It pulls that joint exactly along the brake line. So what happened is this glue joint failed. Let me sure so you can see what I'm talking about. The glue joint that holds this uh, spindle for the armrest failed. Someone probably picked this up. It came up, pushed this this way and cause this split here. So what I need to do is get this back all the way down and then using a couple of clamps line this back up and uh, pull these joints tight. So that'll be the next step. And we've got most of the, uh, the tape off and once this is all glued we're going to have to clean it all up again anyways. 
so that's when we will uh, we'll do the finish cleaning up. So let's uh, let's see how we do. I've got that arm spindle lifted up as much as I dare, and I was able to clean off much of it. And I'm going to lay in a goodly amount of yellow glue into this joint. and reseat this arm so it doesn't come back out. I gotta make sure I've got this coming over. There we go. Now that's down. Now this this broken joint will line back up. I'll see if I can set you up where you can watch me clamp that up. All right, let's get some glue on that shattered joint. And as we've done before, we're just working that glue as hard as we can into those cracks. Try to get it on every surface we can. This is going to be one of those glue ups where as the clamps go on, all sorts of glue squeezes out. You're not going to be able to clean it up while it's wet because the clamps are going to be in your way. So you're going to have to clean it up afterwards. And I would probably put some wax paper on this, but I really, really need to see how these joints are pulling together to make sure I've got it straight. Because with this back where it belongs, this is all lining back up again, which is really good news. Because we got this arm back where it belonged by resetting this joint here, we were able to relocate this twisted green stick split, and you can see how tight this joint is. Remember how that, that was displaced. I had to use some smaller uh, metal clamps to get in there. I normally don't like to do that. They can bruise the wood, and I just didn't have room enough to try to pad them, but I don't have them really cinched on there. They're just holding the joint together and I think we'll be fine uh, when they come off. Take you around back. And you can see how tight that joint has come together. And again, we'll get this glue cleanup taken care of, but that joint is nearly perfect now. And that was not an easy, an easy one to get back together. We do have some missing wood up underneath this, and we'll probably fill that in with epoxy. But right now, we're going to let this entire joint sit overnight and let that glue do its best job of pulling everything back together. And we'll get back on this in the morning. But this is going to be a good repair. We'll get these chairs cleaned up, and someone will enjoy these. These are high-quality chairs, and they've got a lot of life left in them. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, it's the next day. Let's see how we did. Okay, we did real well down at the bottom. Not quite as well up to the top. Didn't pull together like we'd hoped up there. And it's actually not bad right here. It's not an alignment issue, it was a clamping issue. But that's that's very easily fixable. But anyways, this spindle is rock solid now. So let me, uh, let me do a little bit of work here and we'll see how we're going to fix this. And we take a look at this, uh, this repair. This is where the wood was missing. We had talked about this. This is absolutely flush down through here. And we have just <coughs> right along here, and I'm not sure if you can 
if you can even see it. We have just a little bit of elevation of this piece that glued down. So what I'm going to do is take a uh, exacto knife, run it through here, flatten that out a little bit, and then sand that down. And if we have to put a little bit of fill in there, we will. But I think we can get that get that flush. This this lined up right along the grain lines. It's absolutely straight now, and that was very important. Now we just got to uh, to get this piece flush, which unfortunately it did not go down as tightly along this seam as we'd hoped. It's very difficult for me to get you in here while I'm doing it, but what I did is just took this old X-Acto knife and I ran it along here and took off the little bit of wood that was proud of the surface. Now what I'm going to do is come in a little bit of sandpaper and smooth this out and then I'm going to come back with uh, either epoxy or Timbermate and just fill in a little bit around where the wood is missing and taper that all in. So it's it's going to look good when we're done. It's it's It wasn't as bad as I had uh, first thought when I looked at it. It's just a little tiny bit of elevated wood and we can get that smoothed down. So I'll keep at it. And that's how we look after uh, a little bit of sanding and you can see this is the area here where we uh, had the original wood loss. So I've mixed up some epoxy putty. This is an oak slash light walnut and I found this to be a pretty good match for this brown maple color. And I'm just going to lay some of this on. I'm really struggling to do this work and hold this, hold this camera. And that's basically what we're going to do. I'm just going to spend a little time smoothing that out. We'll wait for it to dry and we will get it uh, light sanded off and then move on to color. And we haven't done it, even any sanding yet and you can see how nicely that's all blended in. So that'll dry off, or harden up rather. I'll hit it with some 220 very lightly and then we'll do some color work. Now what I found on this, uh, these brown maple pieces is the uh, brown maple toner uh, is a real real close match and then if you need to uh, use a pigments color I put a little bit of um, perfect brown and a little bit of like light golden oak or yellow ochre together and that gives me a pretty close match but as soon as that hardens up we'll, we'll do a light sanding on that do some color work and we'll be done but you can see that that already is looking really good. Okay we've got the uh, epoxies dry and we've got it sanded and it came out really well. Let's give the, uh, let me see if I can focus in on this, there you go. Mohawk Tone Finish Toner Medium Brown Maple is the color. I've got the adjacent spindles taped off. Let's just see how this does as far as bringing back original color and, and it's going to work really well it's going to work really well and remember when you use uh, you use these toners don't use them like spray paint you want to mist them on let them dry mist them on and let them dry if you use them like spray paint and they run it's going to look terrible but anyways that's it take you around front here we go. That thing was broken in three pieces and it was repaired in place. And this chair is ready to go back to work. Well, listen, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards. Thanks for watching. Take good care. We'll see you next video. Bye.